Welcome back to another episode of Building the EMG-6. In this episode, we're going to manufacture the keel pockets that are used for the interface from the aluminum keel tube to the 4130 steel fuselage frame. These keel pockets are three out of the five components that are used to attach the keel to the fuselage frame assembly. The instrument panel bulkhead, the rudder pedal standoff, and the nose skid attachment. Each of these three keel pockets are identical. We will want to refer to drawing 5310-08-100-02. This part is manufactured from 1 and 1 8 inch diameter tubing with a .058 wall thickness 4130 chromoly steel. We can identify the tube by measuring the outside diameter and the wall thickness with a pair of calipers. You can also use the tube marking template that is downloadable from the website. Open the PDF file and print it at 100% scale. Cut out the template with a pair of scissors. Simply wrap the template around the diameter of the tube and read the diameter on the left side of the template. And since this keel pocket is manufactured from tubing that is being split down the length, we can also use this template to mark the adjacent side of the tubing for the purposes of maintaining a proper cut. Once we've marked both sides of the tube, we will need to make a line down either side that is parallel with the tube. We can do this by placing a piece of channel onto the tube, which will maintain alignment simply because of its geometry, and then mark it with a magic marker. Once we have the tube marked on either side, we will now need to cut through the center line of the tube. One of the easiest methods for accomplishing this is using a metal cutting bandsaw. Let's first mark the distance that we have to cut so that we don't cut any longer than necessary. If we look at the drawing, we can see that this needs to be four and a half inches in length. You really don't want to split any more tube than is necessary so that you'll have some uncut tube that you can put into the vise or into the bandsaw for cutting off the split pieces. One of the hardest things to do is to keep both the top and the bottom side of the tube aligned properly during the cutting process. We've found that the most efficient way to accomplish this is to cut only one side at a time. Tilt the tube at an angle so that the underside of the tube is not making contact with the bandsaw blade. Make a small cut onto one side of the tube and then rotate the tube around and make an additional cut on the opposite side. Now the bandsaw blade can be inserted into both cuts simultaneously. As you begin the cut, continuously raise the tube so that you cut on only one side of the tube at a time. After you've made substantial progress, flip the tube over and repeat the process on the other side. Thin wall tubing can be very difficult on the bandsaw blade. By raising the blade, you're cutting through enough material that you will eliminate the chatter and you'll receive a cleaner cut. This method of raising the tube will allow for substantial control and is a good method for splitting tubes as we've seen. That being said, we've developed one other method for splitting tubes which eliminates the necessity for marking the center lines. By welding up a piece of inch and a quarter by 058 wall tubing to a small bracket, we can clamp it to the face of the bandsaw. We're able to maintain the center line alignment as we push the tube through it. However, because of the thin wall tube, the speed of cutting has to be relatively slow. After we've split the tube the required four and a half inches, we need to cut the split tubes to the proper length. If your bandsaw is not completely cutting straight, add a little extra material on the cutoff so that you can sand it down to the exact length later. Once again, we can use the bandsaw to cut off our pieces to length. An alternative method, if you happen to have a lathe in the shop, is to use that for trimming to the exact length. 
Our keel pockets are now starting to take shape. Next, we will go over to the sander and sand the two open faces parallel with each other and smooth out any ir irregularities that were created from the bandsaw. The overall depth of the keel pockets is not all that critical. If you need to sand a little deeper to smooth out the saw marks, it won't be any problem. Once we have the two open faces parallel with each other, we need to radius the ends of the tube, sand them to our final dimension. This radius is not all that critical and your eyeball is usually sufficient to judge for the proper radius. These are simply for aesthetic purposes and to remove excess weight. Most of the time there's a little patina from the mill on the face of the tube, or sometimes there's a little rust that's still left over. This is now a good time to clean this up once we're on the sander. By simply putting the face against the sanding disc, we can clean all of that off, leaving a nice clean surface. Next we'll want to take the keel pocket that's now taken shape and run it through the wire wheel to clean up and deburr any of the rough edges around the perimeter. With the keel pocket all cleaned up, we're ready to now mark and drill the two mounting holes that will be used for the keel attachment later. This is one area where you should put a little extra attention. Because these parts are interchangeable, and they are the mounting holes for both the ground toe and the arrow toe hook locations, failure to properly position the mounting holes could lead to misalignment during the mounting of the other components. One of the best ways to find the center line on these tubes is to lay them face down on the table and then using a small mill file, balance between the faces of both tubes, slide them back and forth, creating a mark on the high spot of the tube. This will be the center line of the half tube. Once we have the center line mark, we can now lay out and mark the positions for the mounting holes using a pair of calipers. Remember to mark from only one end as the critical dimension is the distance between the holes. Once we have the hole locations marked, we can center punch the tubes. Because the tubes are convex, it can be difficult to keep the drill bit aligned without a good center punch mark. Next, we can take the keel pockets to the drill press and using a 3 16 inch drill bit, drill through at each one of the marked locations. After drilling, it would be a good idea to deburr the mounting holes so they don't scratch or scuff the keel tube during the installation process. We have now come to the end of another episode of building the EMG-6. In this episode, we showed you how to manufacture the keel pockets from 4130 steel tube. Until next time, happy building, and remember to like us on our YouTube channel. For more information about Adventure Aircraft and the EMG-6, please visit our website at www.electricmotorglider.com.